Assalamu alaikum. I'm in your FET notes. So where I am, I've clicked on the accounting notes and I'm in lesson 57. And today we're doing salaries and wages. Okay, we'll be getting on with the salaries journal. So we've been through all the other concepts for salaries and you need to go through those before we carry on with this one here, right? So if you look at this note here, it's telling you worksheet number nine. We have a salary. A basic salary is calculated on an annual basis and paid monthly. Example, 240,000 rand per annum, and then we are paid 20,000 rand per month, which means that the fixed salary is negotiated before the employee starts his job. You go to for the interview, and then they offer you a salary, and they tell you this is how much you're going to earn for the year, and it's, and it's uh, worked out on that basis, and then we're going to calculate it and say, okay, so that means it's 20,000 thousand rand per month we take 240 and we're dividing it by 12. Now when you have a salary usually there's no pay for overtime which means it's not like wages where you're working extra hours and then you get overtime but what happens is that sometimes you can get a bonus a housing subsidy or a car allowance which means they can give you some money towards buying a house or buying a car right so when we're calculating how much of money we're actually receiving from our employer the gross salary is like that amount there the 20,000 rand it's the basic salary and then we add any payments like the bonuses or these allowances here right so that's how we're working out how we're getting our gross salary. It means anything that we're receiving from our, our employer, the basic salary plus any of these payments here will become our gross salary. Then remember we did all the deductions. We're gonna go through them here in figures now. So certain deductions are made from the salary and then we'll see all the different types of deductions. You remember we did pension fund, we did medical aid, we did UIF, all those, and we did PAYE. All those are called deductions, which gets minus from the amount that you're receiving as your gross salary. And then only your net salary is the amount that you're receiving in your bank account, which is, we calculated, we use the gross salary. So everything you're earning minus everything they've deducted will give you your uh, grow your net salary, right? So let's see how it looks in the journal. What's a salary journal? Like how we have a cash receipts journal, a cash payments journal. Journals are drawn up every month. So it's a first book of entry, which means that when you give, now what is our source document here? We're going to use a salary slip. So when you give a when you have a salary slip, it reflects the gross salary, the deductions, the net salary, the employer's contributions for each employee. So what happens is we prepare the salaries journal monthly okay and then we post it to the general ledger so every month we're going to prepare a salaries journal if you have a big company and you have a lot of people you are paying salaries to you have to keep track of all the salaries you're paying all the contributions that you are making as an employer all the deductions that are there for your for your um, employees and that's how we Gonna, that's, we put all that into a salaries journal and then it's prepared monthly and then obviously we post it to the general ledger. So we need to do that step by step. So today we're concentrating on the salaries journal. Okay, so there's a nice example here for you to go through. Activity 9, it says in, in this activity here that you should use the following information to prepare the salaries journal of ZZ traders, right? So if we look at this information here of ZZ traders, the information is that the gross salary per year for L London is 136.800, right? Now look there, they're telling you per year. Now we have to do a salaries journal for February, which means you have to do it for one month. So in your mind, you know already you need to take that amount and you need to divide it by 12. For V Valley, he's getting 205, 200 and K Kruger is getting 153,600. So the next part of the information is the following deductions were made. So this is their gross salary, right? Now, what is minus from their salary is these deductions that they have to pay, okay? So pension fund is 5% of the gross salary. We're gonna go through it, how to work it out. PAYE is 36% of the gross salary after the pension fund has been deducted. Now look, that's so important. After the pension fund is deducted. So first you have to work out your pension fund and then you have to calculate your PAYE and I'll show you how to do it. Your medical aid fund, there's no calculation to do. 
193 o per month will be deducted so for each person they'll be paying 193 o per month and uif is based on one percent of that gross salary so what is happening is they're giving you information about how in this company is easy traders how they work out the pension fund deduction how they work out PYE and the medical aid and the uif and you have to apply it to each one of these people here and see how much is their gross salary and what is their deductions and then we'll be able to know the uh, net salary but now look at this information here right so this is where you need to separate the information this is the gross salaries those are the deductions now here the following contributions were made by zz traders the zz traders is the employer so these are the employers contributions pension fund rent to rent basis okay so whatever you worked out for the employee it's the same thing that they're going to contribute so this deduction comes off their salary and this amount is paid by them right so medical aid fund 50 percent of the employees contributions to a maximum of 900 rand. so i'll show you how to work that out as well uif is always one percent one percent the employee plays 1% the employer pays. And STL, remember we went through that, the skills de development levy is 1% of the gross salary. So now look at the format of a salaries journal. So what is happening in the salaries journal here is you have salaries journal of ZZ Traders for February, right? SJ11, they just given any folio, okay? So you have your employees, right? The name of the people that are working for you. London Valley and Kruger right you have a column where you're going to say gross salary so we have to work out what is the gross salary then we have a whole can you see here this is in dark it's it's put in here pension PAYE medical aid and UIF all the deductions and then you have a column where you're going to have total deductions so these are all your deductions then we're going to get to our net salary and how are we going to work out our net salary we're going to take our gross minus the total deductions here we come to the net salary so this is the first part of the salaries journal it's the part that you're going to be paying to the employee so this is the actual figures that's going to go out from your bank account then the check number now we're paying employers contributions because remember we have to pay this amount if we are zz traders so we're paying the employees and then we have to also contribute towards the medical aid pension fund uif str so but the contributions are based on those values there we have to work them out separately and then we get a total okay okay we're going to carry on and we're going to complete the salaries journal here as an example for you to study from Okay. so let's look at London right so London has 136,800 rand and for that's for the year so what is his gross salary going to become I'm going to take 136,800 I'm going to divide it by 12 so his gross salary will become 11,400 if you look at the answer there you'll see that his gross salary is 11,400 right let's do V Valley right value is 205 200 i'm dividing it by 12 because that's his yearly amount he's going to get 17,100 every month so it's 17,100 then we've got kruger for 153 600 and i'm dividing it by 12 i'm going to get 12,800 can you see how i filled in my gross it's actually supposed to be a gross salary there right so how much is his gross salary we did divided his yearly amount by that by 12 we divided that guy's amount and we divided that guy's amount and then you have a total there at the bottom so if you have 10 employees or three employees it's the same thing now i need to calculate the pension fund based on the gross salary okay so what is my pension fund telling me there my pension fund is saying i have to pay five percent of my gross salary so these people have to pay five percent of the gross salary so if we're using l london first we're going to say 11,400 multiplied by 5%, I get 570. Can you see 570, right? So it's 5% of that amount. Now the next guy is 17,100 times 5%. I've got 855, okay? 
Then the next guy is 12,800 times 5%. I've got 640 there. That's a simple, straightforward percentage calculation, and you're putting your total in. Now, the PAYE, they made it a little bit more complex. 36% of the gross salary after the pension fund has been deducted. So it's not difficult. All you need to do is you're taking 11,400 from there. You're first going to minus your 570. It's after your pension fund. So that becomes 10,830. Then you're going to multiply by, they said 36%. Okay, so you get 3898.80. So for the next guy, he's got 17,100. Then how much are we taking out for his pension? Minus 855. So that's the amount after pension, and I have to multiply it by 36%, and I'm getting 5848.20, right? Oh, sorry, I've clicked out of there. Sorry, I touched my screen there. Okay, so we were, uh, we were calculating the PAYE, so we got 5848.20 for this valley guy. Now for Kruger, again, we took 12,800. We must minus the pension fund because that's how they're telling us to calculate it. And I'm multiplying it by 36%. Okay, so 4377.60. So what I did for my PAYE, was is I just took um, the pension fund off the gross salary and then worked out 36%. Medical aid is easy. They told you everybody must pay 1930 every month. So for each person, you're going to deduct 1930 per month, right? UIF is also simple always. UIF, you're taking your basic salary, 11,400, and you're multiplying it by 1%. You're going to get 114. You're going to take 17,100, multiply by 1%, you get 171. And 12,800, multiplied by 1%, you're going to get 128. There's your total of your three employees. So UIF is quite simple, medical aid. So the total is this plus this plus this plus this. That's his total deductions. So L. London, if we're looking at him, right, 11,400, he started off as his basic salary. Then he paid five seven. He has to pay five seventy plus three eight nine eight plus one nine three zero plus one one four, which equals to his total deductions will become six five one two point eighty. Can you see how sad it is? How much gets deducted in your salary? So what you end up with is your net salary of four eight eight seven point twenty. Can you see how I came to the net salary there? If you, you take the seventeen thousand one hundred. His total deductions for these four deductions is 8804. You're going to take that minus that, and you're getting 8295.80. Same thing for Kruger, 12,800. If you work it out, and you're going to just play with your calculator and go through this example, then it will be easy for you to do any salaries journal, right? So 12,800 minus the 7075 is how we're getting to that net salary. We're adding it up together, and you're getting a total there. Now we come to employer's contributions. So this is separate where you've worked out each person's salary, what they're getting deducted from their salary, and how we're coming to a net salary, okay? Now the employer's contributions, right? Now, why, how much does the employer contribute? It's a different story now. Pension is rent for rent. So what does that mean? For pension, we need to take the same amount, 570 for him. So we will, so the employer, ZZ, will pay 570 to the pension fund. He'll pay 570. He's paying 855, so ZZ will pay 855. This guy is paying 640, so you're going to pay 640 for him, right? So it's rand for rand means it's the same. Medical aid is telling you that 50% of the employer's contributions employees contribution sorry to a maximum of 900 so what we're doing here is is we're looking at the employees contributions right this is for medical aid so he's contributing 1930 so you have to pay 50 percent okay so let's see what is 50 percent of the 1930 50 1930 times 50 percent is 965 but they have a maximum amount there okay <coughs> sorry, a maximum amount of 
um, sorry, where are we? A maximum amount of 900. So we can't pay 965. So then you have a maximum amount, so you're going to pay 900, 900, 900. Okay, can you see how they haven't, they've worked out 50% first, it comes to 965, but we won't contribute 965. We have a limit, we'll only contribute 900 for each employee there, right? Because it's the same. If it was different, you have to work out each one, divide it by 50%, and see if it's more than 900 then you, you have to only contribute 900. If it was less than 900, then you would only do the 50% amount there, right? UIF is easy. It's the same thing. It's 1% by the employer, 1% by the employee. That's why you can see they're going to get deducted 171, and, and the employer ZZ is also going to pay 171 to the UIF, right? So can you see there? Now we've got... Pension there for is uh, 128. We've done the UIF, medical aid and pension. STL, remember we did STL. Only the employer pays the STL. It's got nothing to do the, with the employee. 1% of the gross salary. So why is it equal to the UIF? Because they both are 1%. So it's 114 for this guy, 171 for this guy. It's not equals to UIF always. It's 1% of your gross salary so this time it's equal so that's why we're saying one percent of eleven thousand four hundred one percent of seventeen thousand one hundred and one percent of twelve thousand eight hundred and we've got a total there and if you add all the total up this is the total contributions you're going to make from the zz traders are going to pay we'll see in the when we're doing the t accounts how it affects the t accounts i just want you for now to get a picture in your mind that what is the employee what's happening with the employee you the employer ZZ. You're paying these three people their salary. Here's their gross salary, right? But this is not the amount you're going to pay them. You're first going to deduct. You're going to take money from that gross salary and you're going to pay 570 towards their pension fund. You're going to pay the tax for them. You're going to pay the medical aid and the UIF. And that's the total deductions. It's going to come from their money that you're paying those deductions. Then only that net salary goes into their bank accounts. Okay, so you have to know how to ha use your gross salary and you minus your deductions and you're coming to your net salary. Then employer's contributions is totally separate from what is happening here. It means how much is the employer paying for these employees to the medical aid, to the pension fund, to UIF and to SDR. So if you use this, it's a very lovely example. They've done it in a very nice way. Okay, and if you want to even try to do this one, this activity on your own, you can try to fill it out on your own and use this example to study because it's going through the pension fund, medical aid, PAYE, the deductions are done, the salary is done, the basic salaries are done, and the contributions are done, and then we can move on to do questions, inshallah.